perfect. Didn't you know? Shadow the Hedgehog is a cinematic RPG released on the Nintendo GameCube and the first entry in the Shadow Trilogy. Shadow the Hedgehog follows the story of Shadow the Hedgehog, a morally ambivalent anthropomorphic porcupine, and his journey to save the multiverse from racially divergent extremist immigrants. Shadow the Hedgehog is infamous for its use of guns, as it was the first time in history that guns were ever used in a video game. This would later go on to inspire many future games and characters, including Joker's use of guns in Smash Bros. Ultimate, James Bond's use of guns in the James Bond movies, and of course, the entirety of the first-person shooter genre, most notably the Call of Duty Black Ops franchise. Shadow the Hedgehog didn't just pioneer the use of guns in video games, however. It actually was the inspiration for guns in real life as well. According to a 10th century E3 interview with Northern Sung Dynasty Emperor Taizu, Shadow the Hedgehog helped him in designing the very first guns for his military, which consisted of a bamboo tube that used gunpowder to fire a spear. Of course, due to hardware limitations of the time, they were unable to fully emulate the more advanced weapons seen in Shadow the Hedgehog, such as the Railgun and the Omochao Gun. They did, however, manage to craft a weapon similar to the Samurai Blade in-game, which would eventually lead to the creation of the Wano Arc in One Piece. Shadow the Hedgehog is unique as it's one of the only video games to feature branching pads based on a player's choices. For this reason, the game became incredibly popular in Japan in the early 2010s, and helped pave the way for a new genre of gaming entirely. This, of course, was visual novels. Shadow the Hedgehog is cited as the inspiration for both of the first visual novels ever created, Katawa Shoujo and Doki Doki Literature Club. In fact, the latter even has a reference to this development history in-game, with one of the characters making reference to The Edge, Visual novels weren't the only games inspired by Shadow the Hedgehog. One of the boss fights in the game requires the player to fight a flying military spacecraft, which circles the player at quick speeds. This opponent is known as Blue Falcon, and would later inspire the hovercraft racing franchise F-Zero, featuring a vehicle of the same name. Shadow the Hedgehog features many lines of dialogue that have stood the test of time and remained in the minds of fans even today. These lines vary from such classics as Find the computer room! to You know what they say, the more the merrier! and Where the hickety heck is that gosh darn fourth Chaos Emerald? Perhaps the most infamous of these, however, is a collection of lines spoken by Charmy the Bee in the level Prison Island, where Mr. Bee inquires about gaining further comprehension regarding what a top secret disc is. These lines were actually put in the game as a part of a political agenda in an attempt to breed a hatred for bees. While it's unknown why this agenda occurred in the first place, the developers even went as far as to prevent the second player from playing as Charmy, making him the only member of Team Chaotix who can't be remotely controlled during the story mode. This propaganda against bees, though it took some time, evidently was very successful. One aspect of Shadow the Hedgehog that is often overlooked is the multiplayer battle mode. This is because most people who play Shadow the Hedgehog have no friends to play with to begin with, and thus are unable to even access the mode. However, for the lucky few who have experienced it, it contains several easter eggs referencing Shadow's story. The first is the fact that the only playable characters are Shadow the Hedgehog, similar to the main story. In addition to this, it includes a yellow color swap of Shadow, which references Shadow's super form in the final battle against Devil Doom. Finally, the remaining four Shadows are all androids, a reference to one of the main paths in the story. Shadow the Hedgehog isn't rated E10 for the reasons you may think. While the back of the box claims that it's because of, quote, fantasy violence and mild language, this is actually a cover-up for the real reason. East Asia has very strict gambling laws, and thus the inclusion of the Egg Dealer as half of the possible end-of-route bosses caused an immense controversy across that quarter of the continent. To prevent children under the age of 10 from being exposed to such sinful gameplay as gambling, they forced Nintendo to raise the rating up to E10. This didn't stop them from secretly adding gambling and slot machines to every single 3D Sonic game in the future out of retaliation, however. One part of Shadow the Hedgehog that surprised players was its incredibly large cast of characters. It was the first game to introduce Sonic the Hedgehog, a rival counterpart to Shadow, who would later go on to have an entire franchise of his own. 
In fact, it even predicted some of the problems that would occur in later games, and preemptively fixed said problems in Shadow the Hedgehog's story itself. This is most famously shown through the addition of the full neutral ending, which makes fun of the Android subplot found in the reboot of the Sonic franchise, Sonic Heroes. What most fans don't notice, however, is that Shadow the Hedgehog actually solved an entirely different issue that would plague many future Sonic games, that being the different types of levels. Shadow the Hedgehog managed to perfectly blend together many different gameplay styles, while still having them all centered around the speed aspect that made future Sonic games so popular. In this sense, Shadow the Hedgehog created the single best game to ever grace humanity. Speaking of gracing humanity, didn't you know that Shadow the Hedgehog was actually the inspiration for humans themselves? According to a 4000 BC stone tablet carving, God was amazed after playing a copy of Shadow the Hedgehog for the Nintendo GameCube, specifically due to the portrayal of the human characters, who were eerily similar to his own image. He would later go on to use their design as the basis for real-life humans, resulting in the overpopulation we now know today. Many fans have been confused in the past about the full extent of the development history for Shadow the Hedgehog. Most of this confusion is derived from when it was created to begin with. While many sources mistakenly say it was released in 2005, usually due to its relationship to Sonic Heroes, evidence points to a much earlier release, as shown through its influence on the creation of humanity itself. This, however, causes several timeline issues, as Super Mario Bros. for the NES is commonly known to be the first video game ever created. This means that, for the game to have been created first, and to have inspired media existing prior to the first video game, Shadow the Hedgehog must fulfill two requirements. It must 1. Create multiple different timelines, and 2. Be capable of transcending space and time to bend said timelines in the ways it wishes, leading to an infinite loop in which it is both present before and after other games, being the influence for games that claim to have been made before and after it. What does this all mean? It means that we, as mere mortals, are actually living in one of the Shadow the Hedgehog timelines ourselves, a fact which the game so slyly hid right in front of our faces until this very moment. In fact, it's entirely possible that the loop and timeline we live in itself is based on the never-ending cycles that start in Westopolis, further convoluting the paradox that is the reality of Shadow the Hedgehog. This may have even been referenced through the stage Mad Matrix, which both influenced the Enter the Matrix series and possibly was a hint at the truth behind the Shadow Paradox. Theoretical quantum mechanics theorists have tackled the issue and found that the only explanation is a spatial rift that is slowly disrupting the fabric of time and causing the complete collapse of all known timelines. It's been revealed recently that such a time distortion is unable to be created by a single entity alone, and thus must be the result of an additional variable of equal power adding to the time dilation. Upon further research, it was revealed that an alternate universe did in fact exist, one in which Shadow the Hedgehog was released not on the Nintendo GameCube alone, but also on the Nintendo PlayStation 2, though the name of the console may differ slightly due to the timeline differences across dimensions. Of course, that means to get out of said paradox, we must destroy the additional time dilator that is vying for control in the cosmic struggle if we wish to bring about eternal peace and prevent the total collapse of the universe. Would a human being be capable of performing such an incredible reality-bending act? Is such a feat even possible? Well, that was easy. I just hope it didn't have any unintended consequences in terms of altering our current dimension's time-space continuum.